Hi all, Jeanette here and today we're going to talk about uh, how we fertilize in our greenhouse. Uh For years, the only way we figured out to fertilize was to pour fertilizer on the plants or to soak them in a tray that contained fertilizer. And then a couple years ago, we discovered that we could use what's called a fertilizer injector. And what it is is a tank like this that's uh, similar to a pump-up sprayer tank. And inside it has this apparatus with two little tubes that go down here. One feeds the water into the fertilizer injector from your water source. The other takes it back out of the fertilizer injector and injects it into the source of water that you're going to be putting on your plants or whatever it is you want to fertilize. It has a little filter here so that dirty things can't get sucked up into the system and plug it up, which you have to clean now and then. So the contraption comes with this connector. You hook your water supply into the female side. You hook your outgoing hose into this side so that you can send the fertilized water on that way. On the cap it has blue and green. The blue is where the water comes in from this, the dark sided hose. And the green is where the fertilized fertilizer is injected into the hose as it goes here and then you have fertilized water that you're spraying onto your plants. It also has a dial right here where you can turn it this way and you can let the fertilizer come out fast or you can turn it this way and slow it down so your parts per million in your water is not um, as strong. Uh, we kind of go fast. We don't tend to water heavily whenever we water, so we want a lot of fertilizer on there when we do water. We use a water-soluble fertilizer that's made by Miller. And you put it in here dry. It has to be a water-soluble, and you put it in there dry. I don't think it has to be a dry fertilizer. It just has to mix well with water. And then you take your uh, lid, put it down in there, screw it on then you take your ho two hoses the one coming in from your water supply and the one going out to where you're going to water in your greenhouse you put them together and as you turn your water on the black hose fills this tank with water the force of the water going down in here should mix it up well you could also as it's filling pick it up and kind of swirl it around to mix up your water and your fertilizer and screw it down and then whenever you uh, spray the water out of your um, hose it has fertilizer mixed in with it. You need to make sure that you have a fertilizer that's not going to damage your plants if it uh, gets on the leaves because some fertilizer will burn it but this type of fertilizer we use does not burn the leaves of the plants. I still try to not put it directly on the plants. I try as best I can to get it down on the soil and then uh, I feel like I'm safe but I have never had any issue of it burning the leaves of the plants. What I have had issue with is the pressure of the water left in this tank has popped holes in it. It'll get especially on the seam right here it will get a a, a leak in there and it'll spray water and that's very annoying. They do warn you when you buy these tanks to not leave the water pressure on. When you're through watering turn the water off so there's there's not pressure in there but it's hard to remember because I have to walk to a different place and turn the water off and I guess I'm kind of lazy and I get so many things in my mind that I forget that I need to turn the water off. So what we've done is we bought a pressure gauge. We ordered this pressure gauge on Amazon and this particular one is adjustable. It has a screw right here where you can adjust it to 
uh, less or more pressure and then it has a dial to tell you how much pressure there is. It's made out of brass so it's not going to fall apart anytime soon and so it's got a filter on it. It's first got this screen right here which is where you put your apply line, you screw it into there and then it also comes with a cartridge filter in here. We haven't taken that apart so we don't know what's inside there but this dial here has some kind of oil inside there I don't see that little bubble in there that that's a shows that there's oil in there it obviously has a little place right there with a rubbery cap that where they filled the oil I think that's so that the dial can move freely and kind of float in there instead of get stopped up as soon as old guy gets his chores done, he's going to come out here and help me get this thing hooked up and uh, we'll start fertilizing. So far this year, when it's cool and it's cloudy, you don't have to do much watering in the greenhouse. In fact, it, it, when it, conditions are like that, it's better to let your plants stay drier than it is wetter. If you overwater when it's cloudy and cool, you're going to develop fungus problems in your greenhouse plants and that can be the ruination of a season's worth of work. So my advice to you, I suggest that you let your plants stay drier than they stay warmer. You don't want them to dry to the point of wilting, but uh, let them dry out well in between waterings. We have this pressure control apparatus. We had talked about putting it in the greenhouse, but there's one bad thing about that. It won't control the pressure in our water line that's laying on the ground outside. And then in the summertime, that builds up greatly. And so we're going to hook it on to this quadruple deal where you can put four hoses on. We, we have this splitter where we can attach four hoses onto it for different operations. This will control uh, pressure on two of the houses. This line supplies our number one and number two house water and so we can control the pressure on them to protect our, our supply lines and our fertilizer applicator. We're back in greenhouse number one where we start the plants. And we're going to hook on our fertilizer applicator onto the supply line from the hydrant. And then we have another splitter that goes onto that so we can have two lines coming out of the fertilizer applicator. Hopefully we can get all the joints tight the first time. Because we hate leaks and that's what messes things up is leaks. This orange hose is the one which feeds a sprayer that Jan uses in the greenhouse to water the plants with. It will now receive water out of our fertilizer applicator and the water supply both. This green hose will go on the other receptacle and it will go to the number two house which is our overflow house, which is getting a lot of overflow already, where she can water it and still get the fertilizer and everything at the same time. We're going to put two of these little cups of 20-20-20 fertilizer, it's what we water our plants in the greenhouses with, in the applicator bucket. So we're ready to put the applicator hoses back into the tank. Since the top is fastened permanently, we have to turn the bottom in order to tighten or loosen the tank. But the hoses squirt the water directly into the tank, so this is water-soluble fertilizer, and so we don't have to stir it or anything. It mixes itself readily when the water goes to it. And then we set it aside out of the way, turn on the water and hope it doesn't squirt everywhere else. I'll be right back after I turn the water on and hope my wife isn't wet from spraying. While he's gone off uh, turning the water on, I'm staying here to babysit to make sure that it doesn't spray all over the place. If it starts spraying, I'll have to scream, but I'm hearing that, that means water's going in there. 
The connections are not leaking. I hope there is one little drip underneath that one connection, that shiny place there. Hopefully I don't see any more falling down. So I think we have success. It takes a little bit for that tank to fill up. The fertilizer is blue, so I can kind of tell. That's one thing I like about that blue fertilizer. I can tell when it's in there. Your pressure. Well, I think I can't tell about the pressure. I'm not going to squirt it till I can uh, get the tank filled up. But I hear the tank, and I don't see any leaks except one little drop of water that I don't really think is a leak. But I think we're good. Okay, well I can't tell what the gauge says, whether it's almost 50 or almost 60. Okay, well I'll have to come out there and look at that. You got a screwdriver? It's laying there on the table, I think, a little short one. Okay. Okay, let's go see. It says it's like at 38, and we're going to try to work with 35 and see what happens. So. What we got to do is, there's a little screw right there, turn it to the left is minus, to the right is plus. It's not going to make any difference without anything going out. We shut it off, put the pressure back out of it. And then can you turn it back on and it'll adjust? I think so. Okay. Let me turn this down some more and then see where to start now. Well, it looks like it went up to like 33, 34. Okay, watch it closely. I think that's, that's 34. So just up another click. Did it do it? Uh, leave it there and it's trying to catch up. One more little dab. I think we're gonna call that good. Okay, it's on 35, sorry. Okay, so old guy wants me to test how it sprays, so I'm wondering if he wants to be sprayed to find out. Not yet. Not yet? Too cold yet. You're gonna wait for uh, the evening to take your shower? So one of the uh, concerns that I have is that I have enough pressure to get a good spray out of my nozzle without having too much pressure on my tank and cause it to explode and make leaks. It doesn't really explode, but it makes leaks in there. And so we're gonna test out the pressure on the hose and see if it's a good spray. Okay, we're gonna go, see what happens. Oh yeah, we got a great stream. I think we might even be able to kick it back a little bit. Well, air's coming through there. So, we're going to try, I think, to kick it back to maybe 25 pounds. I just want enough to be have a good stream consistently. So this is 25, and I feel like it's not quite good enough. So he's going to kick it back up a little bit. Okay, so we settled on 30 pounds uh, per square inch. And I think that gives me a good stream where I have got a good supply of water coming through. It doesn't take me forever to water. It gives me enough water to get through with the uh, what I'm doing. But I think it'll cut back the pressure that's allowed to, the, to go to the fertilizer injector and hopefully keep it under control. Uh, it's still a good idea for me to turn it off every time, but uh, we'll see how it all goes. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time on the Neils Homestead.